So the metaverse is progressing in some huge and exciting ways, but there's a flurry of tech making that all possible. While most people's introduction to the metaverse may have been Facebook blindsiding the world with its announcement by literally changing its name to Meta, the concept of a metaverse goes far beyond Zuckerberg's pipe dream, and is actually being realized in more ways and by more people than you'd think. Hello and welcome to Engineomics, my channel discussing the futuristic and the financial. In my last video, I covered Facebook, or Meta I guess now, and their idea of a metaverse, which is seemingly a lightning rod of controversy. Yes, Facebook is doing exciting things, but people instantly think they'll be the sole proprietor of a metaverse, which, sparing some insane digital matrix-like hostile takeover, just won't be the case. We're not going to be living in Mark Zuckerberg's head where he's the puppet master. It's super easy to criticize Facebook, I know I did a lot in the last video, but they aren't going to be the sole individuals controlling everything in our cyberspace. And if for some reason I'm wrong about this, well, I'll just drop my Facebook meta personal identification number in the description so that you guys can all come up to me in 10 years when we're all imprisoned in this wild metaverse and tell my sobbing avatar why I'm wrong. Anyways, innovation does not happen in a vacuum, and it certainly doesn't happen in the moralist vacuum that is meta. To prove that, let's talk about the invention of the smartphone. For a lot of people, the quintessential smartphone inventor is Apple under Steve Jobs. Their iPhone announcement video stands as one of the most famous keynotes of all time. The turtleneck clad Steve Jobs holding that slick slab of glass is a truly iconic, brand-defining moment. Don't get me wrong, this is a huge leap forward, but the success and widespread adaptation of the iPhone cannot solely be accredited to Steve Jobs and Apple. The iPhone came at a time where faster internet speeds, huge leaps in mobile processing, and smaller digital cameras were the case. Remember if you wanted to take a picture, the easiest way is to whip out one of these guys? I can't even picture that right now. That's not even to mention the accessibility to lightweight applications in both development and usability. You probably see where this is going. Like the smartphone and against Mark Zuckerberg's bold claims, innovation does not happen in a vacuum. And with something as revolutionary as a metaverse, a digital, always on, persistent online world, it's going to take a lot to happen and a lot to make it work. Okay, with that out of the way, I'm going to share with you the five technologies that will drive the metaverse to reality. Number one is VR and AR headset technology. Yeah, it turns out that the success of an entire virtual world depends really on the fluidity of its consumption. In the past, we've relied on tethered headsets, which are akin to strapping a literal TV to your face, but companies like Facebook's Oculus and Microsoft HoloLens are actually starting to take these experiences and make them more mobile and accessible. As someone who's used both, they provide a pretty decent experience in virtual and augmented reality, respectively. It's a step in the right direction, but I can't help but address the elf in the room. It still looks pretty dang goofy, and I can't help but laugh at even the most recent Oculus and HoloLens commercials. It'll take some time, but one of the biggest opportunities for driving a seamless and virtual augmented reality experience will be the devices that we wear. But there are a couple other players that are working on improving this experience even more. The Steam Index can provide a pretty powerful tethered experience, and Spectacles by Snapchat provide a bare bones but pretty portable augmented reality experience. They still have a long way to go, but some of the most advanced companies in the world are working on it. And while they haven't had an entry quite yet, Apple is expected to announce an AR slash VR headset within the next year. And it makes a lot of sense coming from a company that already has robust proprietary hardware such as processors and mobile devices. Plus, if anyone can take a bulky, awkward looking technology and turn it into something completely sleek, cool, and maybe a little overpriced, it's Apple. Next, we have to talk about high-speed internet and 5G, and it should go without saying, no tinfoil hats or conspiracies, please. 5G is pretty much here, and so is the high-speed internet. Well, kind of. It's still probably going to take me a good hour or so to upload this video, but that just scratches the surface of what's actually needed since AR and VR experiences require large amounts of data. As an example of how new technology can affect current infrastructure, according to Comcast, video streaming accounted for 71% of all downstream traffic in 2020, and it grew to 70% over 2019 levels. In the United States, Netflix accounts for 12.6% of all downstream traffic internet, and that's just streaming of HD to dimensional video. Like we said before, the metaverse is always on and experienced in real time. There's a ton of data, and like the advent of 3G internet enabling the rise of smartphones, 5G and gigabit speed internet are going to need to be widespread and affordable. And that task will push the limits of what current infrastructure is actually capable of doing. Mobile and broadband internet service providers' current capacity could be stretched thin by a real-time metaverse. In an article titled Networking and the Metaverse, 
Author Matthew Ball claims that the three core areas of networking, bandwidth, latency, and reliability are likely to be the least interesting metaverse enablers. However, their constraints and growth shape how we design the metaverse products and services, when we can use them, and what we can and may never be able to do. When it comes to the metaverse, the hardest part is when the digital worlds of our imagination butts up against real life. This brings us to LiDAR and imaging, the third technology that we need to discuss when discussing the metaverse. LiDAR and imaging has long been a technology that has avoided mainstream adoption. It's the reason why self-driving technology in cars has only been recently taking foothold. And that's because it's hard for a computer to identify what's in the physical world. And with something as reality bending as a metaverse, well, this has to be done pretty well. During the pandemic, the company Matterport has made huge ground with their rotating LiDAR devices. While originally used to capture objects and spaces, using a combination of LiDAR scanner and a camera to stitch together a scene, these devices exploded in popularity, allowing their scenes to become fully virtual experiences and real estate tours. Heck, I found my last apartment, which you may recognize from my previous videos, with an agent in one of these scans. Once you add virtual reality support, you can get a surprisingly decent experience, and you can actually find out the scale of things from the comfort of your own home, thousands of miles away. A lot of engineering business trips can boil down to inspecting plants, looking for improvements, or planning a new space. And while I relish the opportunity to go somewhere new, a lot of this could probably be accomplished through high fidelity digital scans. And as the metaverse gains traction, incorporating real life spaces into them is paramount. Hence why I think you'll see more companies like Matterport and even Apple who has a LiDAR scanner within every new iPhone and iPad, they'll continue to improve upon imaging capabilities. Alright, now it's time for the most confusing tech enabling the future metaverse, and that's Web 3.0. You can think of the progression of the internet in three stages. For the first, 1.0, also known as read-only. No links, logins, cookies, or interactivity of any sort. It's just you, a page of text, and the deafening dial-up tones that make it all happen in the background. Web 2.0 is largely what we think of in today's internet, with a writable internet, meaning that you can interact with it. It's kind of like how I was writing this script on Google Docs, or your ability to hit the like button on this video or subscribe if you find it helpful. It allows a website to tailor its experience to you as a user. So now that the stage is set, what is Web 3.0? Well, Web 3 is known as the executable phase of the internet. Websites can interpret information in an almost human-like way and tailor experiences to the user in all decentralized way. This implies that you can have a cross-platform identity, which would allow you to maintain consistent experience no matter where you go. That hat you bought for your virtual avatar? Nah, they could stay on your avatar wherever you go through blockchain verification. Furthermore, machine learning can take your input and feedback and improve your experience overall. Well, if this sounds a little bit big brother, it's really not. The draw to Web3 is actually its decentralization. It's open, meaning that it's built on open source software, allowing you to keep the power in the hands of the users. It's trustless, meaning that the network allows participants to interact publicly or privately without a third party. And finally, it's permissionless, which means that anyone can participate without authorization from a governing body, <coughs> Facebook. If you think that big tech is the disease and it has run out of control for too long, Web3 aims to be the antidote, taking the power of the metaverse back to the individual. I'll go into more detail on the power of Web 3.0 and blockchain technology in my future video on the economy of the metaverse, but for now what you need to know is that Web 3.0, for all of its hype within circles of crypto maniacs who have weird pixelated monkey profile pictures on Twitter, it actually has some weight behind it, and can really shake things up when it comes to the virtual realm. Earlier this year, Unity CEO John Ricitello predicted that AR and VR headsets will be as common as game consoles by 2030. This is quite the claim coming from the CEO of the world's most popular development platform for video games. And while this isn't the case yet, a lot of software developers see the trend going this way. Going back to the smartphone analogy, the success of the iPhone would have been virtually impossible without the inclusion of the App Store, which allowed third-party developers to bring their own software to the devices. If you want adoption, you need to have developers yearning to create high quality and unique experiences on your platform. And there's simply nothing like augmented or virtual reality. Last year during the height of the pandemic, I attended a virtual reality concert in a game called VR Chat, and it was pretty awesome. Being able to feel the energy of the crowd and shout out encore recommendations and cheer is something that you just can't get on any other digital platform. Even the traditional medium of video games such as Fortnite can provide platforms for concert experiences, which can transcend the physical reality 
reality of what you think is possible within a concert setting. From games to music to sports to art, the metaverse is only as good as the software built upon it. And like the app economy, which last year was valued at $1.3 trillion, a metaverse economy has the potential to spring up and provide millions and millions of jobs. But like I said, I'll save the economy for the metaverse in my other video. Regardless, we're undoubtedly in the infancies of these experiences, but I'm super optimistic on what's to come. And those are the five technologies driving the metaverse from a mere virtual reality to a physical reality. The biggest conclusion and takeaway from all of this is that it's an exciting time for one of the biggest and most upcoming technological trends of the decade. No matter what you do, this has huge implications on the future, and the best thing that you can do is stay up to date on what's going on. My next video, like I said, is going to be on the metaverse economy, what it might look like, and what you need to know. Also, if you haven't checked out my last video about Facebook's metaverse vision, I dive into Facebook's plan on whatever Mark's doing in this clip. I've got an idea. Hey, where are you going? Gotta pump it to jump it. What? I didn't know that was an option. And also some of the other shortcomings that I could see from a company like Facebook. So get subscribed. Until then, I'm Hank from Engenomics, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.